of the road foreman. Um, is that something that you want to change? Do you want to add a line in here that most generally they're probably out at 4 a.m. during a store so people have an idea when they would expect them because you got to, obviously they've got to get through the route, the school bus route, so it would probably, it's my understanding that if they came out by 4, right, you could get through your school bus. 
out. So I'm not sure should we be adding something in here that says that they will be out by 4 a.m. on a major storm because what your problem is is that Alan is receiving calls in the middle of the night because somebody is somewhere and um, stuck and, you know, I would talk to Ryan. He said when they're at the state, they'll just tell them we'll be out at 4. I mean, I think the, I mean, my opinion, I think the, I mean, the, we have to be careful when we put our hours out there. Yeah, we have just a general. It's 4 and it'll be 4 and we'll get a call from somebody saying, how come I haven't seen the cloud drop? No. Uh, so we can leave the, I mean, the word open-ended, but. A good, you know, I think it's good internal thinking and process that we should do. Uh-huh. I think we have to be careful on whatever hours we advertise, because then we'll be. But you held to that standard at that point. So the internal policy then would be 4 a.m. Um, or maybe maybe some language. Maybe some maybe instead of putting um, the time language, maybe there's some language in there that talks about there's some language about yeah, you know, snow already. Or, or just working with you know having the ample time to go out and plow prior to school school buses and mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, keeping um, accessibility to the city or something mm -hmm. like that, you know. Well, it does say the that, corner. therefore, during periods of time with schools in session, top priority is given to clearing roads. So, I mean, mm -hmm. unless we're going to add something, you know, real specific, I don't, I'm not sure you need to amend it, because I think we're probably covered if you want to leave it that, if you want to leave it that way, you're already covered, Chris. I just wasn't sure if you wanted something more specific, but you can certainly, it could be more of an internal policy for the, I think though the, the, the big part is like the first first couple paragraphs and where where are we about you know you're not gonna have bare roads that you can go hundred miles an hour on twenty four seven. I'm sorry very much, but mm -hmm. make way works in Vermont. That's right. I like the idea of safe roads at safe speeds. Mm -hmm. I stole that yeah, from the state of Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> right off the top on and, their and policy. I like the language in there that, you know. To expect to see some snow covered roads. No. Yeah. Um, it was wonderful downtown. You couldn't have found three flakes of snow on the road all winter. Yes. Um, but that, in our budget, that's not real. No, no. I understand. And this is something, too, that we can put on the website and we can have out for people to see so that Alan, you know, like you said, then people have some idea of what we're. You know, rules and their own rules. You know, Chris has said umpteen times that people that live way up on the top of the mountain should be prepared for winter. Right. And, um, I so mean, I'm, within reason. I mean, within reason. Well, well, winter tires. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody that lived here long enough knows that already anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I think some things, you know, we don't necessarily need to write it in the guidelines here, but I think we just have to thinking about how we're going to manage this because, you know, we don't, we didn't want to adopt a policy that we have to follow, you know, no, by law. That's why they're not. Um, you know, but, it. you know, there's been so many times and we've seen it in the past where, <clears throat> through other administrations where, you know, you get called out in the middle of the night for one little something, you know, to go plow somebody out for a, you know, a reason that maybe could have waited until the morning. Uh, you know, we just kind of got to avoid some of those And unfortunately, I mean, we can't be out there 24-7 maintenance in our roads. I mean, no. We can't afford it. I mean, the state of Vermont doesn't go out 24 hours a day. No. In the road. So, um, you know, people just have to understand that during typical business hours, you know, <coughs> you know, which we have identified in there at 7 to 3.30, um, obviously we'll be out earlier than that to clear the bus routes and sometimes maybe a little bit later than 3.30 to, you know, finish up. But... I mean, that's kind of a typical time. And Absolutely. And if you work or travel on an eight mm -hmm. typical time, you have to be prepared for be prepared. the roads being maybe snow covered. Yeah. Yeah. And it has good comments in here, too, about having proper equipment, you know, fires and whatnot, right. and yep. to anticipate that kind of stuff. So, Alan, does this give you enough flexibility, do you think, to, to make the decisions on the fly, as it were? <laughs> 
I mean, we yeah. try to keep the wording that way, and it says yeah. under the discretion of the road form, and yeah. kind of. Yep. Yeah. And that, obviously, you go to bed, can't walk away, and it's still falling at two centimeters an hour, you don't need to apply to the well. Right, of course. Yeah. 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 So what I'm saying is, between bar yeah. 10 and 5, you could have a foot and a half of snow. Exactly. And have it. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess a, a couple extra comments that I had um, where one, the sidewalk maintenance of the village areas is, you know, currently on bigger snowstorms we're using greater, um, which is fine, but I think we have to be careful on the damage that we're hearing on the sidewalks, and it's very visible if you go up Church Street. I agree with the yeah. Those, those sidewalks are only five years old, and they look like they're 25 years old. And you can see right where the down pressure of the blade is, is, is damaging the sidewalks. And you know, for, if we get a foot of snow and we want to use the grader to help with the sidewalk control, we shouldn't be bringing that grader blade right down to the top of that sidewalk. We should leave it, at, leaving it up and then having your sidewalk plow come behind it and pushing the two inches off, you know? Because there's several, you know, that whole stretch of sidewalk all the way up Church Street is, mm -hmm. is yeah. very big. Yeah, I saw that the other day. Um, I mean, I guess that was one thing that came to mind. And then, um, I mean, we didn't really want to have an exact policy, but I'm assuming that the thinking for this winter is to mm -hmm. is to be running with sand and only salting certain areas. Is that what we're looking at doing? Or because we were looking through, I was looking through some old um, budgets and, and things, and I mean, we, you know, we used to use twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year in salt in this town, um, and I think that's probably more the. Granted, there's been a little bit of price increase since then, but I think that's kind of the range that we need to be looking at, hundred grand, and and then you know moving our sand budget up a little bit to offset some of that. Um, but I mean, if we're committed to a budget that, that might be, you know, 30 grand for salt, you know, we can't use it all up by the first three months of the winter either, you know? Mm -hmm. Are we left for the rest of the winter? So, once it's gone. I mean, I think we just, just need to be able to manage that in a, in a way that, you know, maybe we're just using the salt in the downtown. I don't know. I mean, uh, I've looked at a lot of other towns, and most towns are using sand for almost everything except for some of their village, you know, in around their village area and their sidewalks. I think we do talk about that. We talk about spreading practices in here, where, and we do talk about the rates of application. Um, so it does talk about that, and, and um, obviously it talks about the fact that you know if you're plowing up that road, you're not spreading anything. And on the way back down, after you plow the other side, then you're spreading. But I can tell you, I saw trucks last year plowing up, putting salt right behind them, and plowing right down and taking all that salt off the road. Again. You know, and I can tell you, it's not a best practice. No, and it does talk about that. Miles an hour. Right. You know, we have to be plowing at at proper speeds with proper equipment. You know. And it does talk about that too. Spreading mm -hmm. operations generally be conducted at speeds less than 20 miles an hour. Um, it does talk about that. Normally applied to the middle third of the pavement width and on the high side of bank curve. So it does, and we certainly outlined that. Yep. That's outlined in here. Um, and it talks about too, you know, they did address it, which is what Alan did last year. Sometimes they'd have, if they had some snow, but it was going to rain, they'd leave the snow down so that they could, you know, so rain then plow it off. So he, that's in here, and he'd done that last year. So is the idea to we'll publish this? Yes. On the website, so yep. anyone can. Yep. Go on and and it does talk about, yeah, light snowfall, cumulative snow squalls, which occur after 10 and produce only a light accumulation, may not require any attention you know, until the next day. And so it does. But no, Alan thought that it would help, certainly help him as far as the questions, comments, if people had an idea of how they were operating, it might help, you know, answer some questions. Mm 
-hmm. And we also clarified the mailbox policy, which is if we hit it, we'll replace it. If it is pushed over due to the weight of the snow being pushed, you're on your own because the pole's probably already part of you brought it. So just because the force of the snow knocks it down, that's... that's a lot of the mailboxes that were knocked down were a lot of four right posts. Exactly. So if we hit it, it's ours. Contact. But if, yes, exactly. But if we're just pushing snow on it, it's... It's heavy, you know how that goes. And we've addressed that in here as well. Anybody else have any mm -hmm. discussion? Yeah. Very you detailed. have to be so verbose. Yeah, <laughs> true. I mean, I, I told you, I took the state of Vermont and I took like the town of Windsor's and merged them into Bethel and then everybody took a peek at it. And so what is our best plan of attack to get the information out to taxpayers of the town? About this, I think that we put it on the website and Kelly could do a Facebook post. Um, I can let Lisa know so that, you know, maybe she puts it in her little article for the newspaper. Okay. Um, which, oh, that's right, I didn't speak to about this. So. I know the goal was for us to have this done by yep. the end of July so that individuals would have four or five months to start preparing for winter. Um, let's hope it's longer than that, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> four or five months to get, you know, proper tires and things like that on the vehicle. So. Yeah, so no, we'll do that. We'll, you know, we'll go on the website and Facebook and all that, and then I will ask Lisa if she'll do something for it. She, I'm sure she will. She always is good to us. So you can make the amendments to this, and we can do. Doesn't sound like that needs doesn't sound like you're making any. Action from the no, board. it doesn't sound like you're making any. No, as long as you're okay with them, and yep. you can just do it by consensus. Then we'll we'll move with it as is. Five pieces of paper. What's that? That's five pieces of paper. That whole thing. I believe so. Yeah. And we'll make it a length. And yeah. So I guess that would have like. 20 on the, somewhere there if it would be accessible at the town office if somebody does not oh sure yeah yeah we could mail it to someone if they want yeah have it on display in the town office yeah. and place it like that to call if they want copy. a copy and post around town okay mm -hmm. sure so that puts us to the equipment and everything which is you know, proper equipment, do the proper roads, do the work, and, and you know, the question of what are we going to do with the, the one-ton truck now um, that has issues, um, you know, do we replace it with a, another vehicle or a similar statue, do we get a bigger vehicle, do we not get a vehicle? Um, so I did give you what you asked for, the capital improvement plan, Chris, and I did meet with the road crew, and then I called Alan with some follow-up questions, and so you can see that I put in some uh, proceeds if there was a sale of the equipment. I put in, um, this time I picked the recommendation of the road crew, which was the 10-wheeler, and I put that in here so you could see how that would look. Um, obviously, the grader would be next year, and, and that ended up being a portion of that is via a note, and, um, but I explained that in here as well. So we certainly tried to address all of your um, issues. Obviously the goal is that you have enough money saved and you don't have to pay loans on this equipment, um, which works except you know when you're gonna buy a grader because I was estimating a purchase price of 350,000. Could be high, I don't know, but it's, you know, it's another year and you just don't know. And I obviously estimated a, a proceed from the sale of ours of 80000 which is, I just looked on the internet for some places to see, to try to come up with a number to put in here. So, we're always a little. <laughs> so I guess what concerns me looking through this is, so regardless of what piece of equipment we need to do to work, <clears throat> trying to afford to pay for these, so. Right. And you can you know, we're going to have zero break in the action for, you know, the proposal here is to. I end up taking money out of the purchase a 10-wheeler, you 
know, so now you're going to have a five-year payment on a 10-wheeler starting now. No, there's no payment on the 10-wheeler. Um, Cause you can see, we took the existing money that we have, mm -hmm. So 28819 out of the SALT budget. And so no, we would pay for it. We would end up with zero money at the end of the year. Um, and then next year you have another appropriation. Right, then next year we got... And we end, that's where we do the grader. So I'm right. still we taking... We got the grader purchase that year. And, then, and that becomes a note. And you can see where I put in some proceeds like right. of borrowing. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to carry those numbers forward. So that way in 21 and 22, you could pay for those trucks in full. Mm -hmm. um, it's the only, the, the only borrowing you would do is for the grader. Right. Well, and that's, that's what I'm getting at is yeah. we're going to have a log jam of four years in a row of purchasing a new oh, piece yeah. of equipment. Yep. And, and you're going to have a five-year note. You're going to have a five-year note on it. And you're going to be carrying yeah. five-year <laughs> notes here over the next We're going to be carrying one five-year note in the for the grader. Everything else will be paid for. It's just the greater that we'd be carrying a five-year note for. So this um, loan schedule that you put in there is yeah, Chris, for? Yeah, Chris asked. That's for the greater. For the greater, okay. Yeah, right. he had okay. asked me to come up with amortization, okay. so I did. I Thank said you. that, you know, 350 minus our down payment was 260 over five years. Yeah, yeah. That's how I came up with that. But in my schedule, you would pay for everything each year in full except the greater because nobody's well maybe somebody has that kind of money but we don't so we're going to ask for a large amount every year to pay um we've had the what we had done what is i had interest. taken what we had in and i basically spread the borrowing over those years so you can see it kind of i added it in up top but you're also taking the payment out at the bottom mm -hmm. trying to make it because you would have you know you're making that loan payment each year It's kind of hard because I was trying to, if I could throw all 350 in, or 260 in here, but that, I was trying to keep it so you could see that it was a five-year loan. So the 10 wheel is paid with existing The 10-year wheeler money is theory. paid for with, yes, with the um, money already in the fund, plus the annual appropriation, plus 28,000 or so, or, or 30 grand out of the SALT budget to come up with the money. So what is that, how much does that leave us in the SALT budget then? Are we cutting it to Well, 100000 minus 30, it would leave you seventy. But And that's what Chris had said. If we have, if we need to make a purchase, it's going to have to come out of the general fund budget. And I told the road crew that when I spoke to them. But you're right, Dave. Maybe I shouldn't have added the, I was trying to add, I added the income in and the, payment here at the same time, but take one out, but that's the, so maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should leave the greater payment and taken the borrowing out, because you're right, Dave, we're going to have to increase because we have to cover the loan payment. Mm -hmm. So you either have to ask for more money that year, or we might be able to cut it down because I had some money left at the end of each year, so we could prorate that out and ask for less, but we would have to so increase. Get some more money. Yes, because we'd have to increase the annual appropriation, but we could offset it by this difference on the bottom. So I'll update this. Um, and we are, are we, we're not sure that we can only get 30 out of the something. We haven't decided what something's going to be yet. The SOP budget was approved at $100,000 at town meeting. But anyway, so, you know, you're right. And the unfortunate thing is because you bought two trucks in the same year, that pushes, so we're trying to separate them. And we put in a schedule that we were holding them for, I did, I think I did eight years for one and nine the other, if you want to be on an eight-year rotation. If you want to hold them longer, then you're going to have to increase your repair budget. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing we talked about. I made a little note at the bottom about the grader saying how many hours it has. And once you get to about 8,500, 10,000 hours, you're looking at possibility looking at some bigger repairs. So you can hold things as long as you want, but you need to start throwing some big money into your repair budgets then to offset the, the length of how you're going to hold them.
So, as I said, we wanted a consensus. The consensus out of the road crew was the 10 wheeler. And which one is the 10 wheeler? Oh, the packet that we have here. Yeah. Which is the freight liner or? It was the international, right? The international. Yeah, the number price was one eighty nine nine fifty one. Okay. I don't know what it's an international. Oh, right here. There you go. And where? What would we be using the ten wheeler for? So Chris, if I take the borrowing money out, it's going to change my bottom numbers. So I think there's a chance that we're going to end up having to hold. We may end up having to push the freight liners, maybe a little bit to cover the loan. Because I carried it up here and I shouldn't have, I think. I was trying to show the payment, but then I was putting it here. So I'm not running enough money. So these become tight. But So I, it may end up having to push one of them. I'm not sure. I'll have to redo it. But. I mean, the goal is obviously is to avoid having any more loan payments and to just try to pay for them as we can. But next year, if you were to reduce your SALT budget, you might be able to put a little bit more in your capital equipment fund because you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be spending it on SALT. Well, in theory, we'd be theory. reducing it now. Right. So we'd be reducing it again. Oh, that's true. Well, we'd go, year, yeah, but if you were going to go to 50 versus 100, you'd be taking 30 out of it now. Chris was thinking for mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking 110,000 for all the material we need. Right now we have 150 in the budget, but 110. Okay, but now 29 of it eats up that, so you only have a balance of 11. You're saying, take, so you have 100 in it. That was the budget, it was 100,000. I was thinking of cutting the salt budget from 100 grand down to 40,000. Oh, okay. 
and an increase in the sand budget from 50 to 70. Oh, okay. That's it's a net 40,000. Right. And then I'm saying <coughs> well, then they're going to be up 39,000. Um, yeah. With this truck, you're at 11. So if we purchase this truck, how many vehicles will we have at our disposal then? Is it five? Well, even with the one time going away. And the and the three fifty. We have five vehicles. So we'd have the ten wheeler, the two other freight liners that are the two thousand thirteen. So there's three. What in Morgan's Ford F the three fifty? So there's four. That's it, right? <clears throat> as far as trucks, that's it. So you'd have four trucks, yeah. No, four, five. You got, you, you got the you would have the new ten wheeler, the two freight liners. So there's the two three. freight liners. Then Morgan's truck is the four. Three fifty. And we're buying another ten wheeler. Oh, plus, well, if we buy, right? No. As it is right now, we have two ten wheelers, one six wheeler, and a three. Right, so that's five. four. Yeah, you have five. Yeah, you have five. 2017 right International that goes in 2025. Five is 10 years of that one time. Right, we still have five. But you don't have anything that's, you know, the other concern was, I think, that. Well, and AJ had said it, right, was that, you know, the good thing about the one ton is it gives you that if you're hauling like material off, well, maybe Morgan said, from like a water dig, or like AJ had said, it makes it easier for like hot mix, that sort of thing. So if you, yeah, so if you don't have that, then you don't have that, you don't have a vehicle for those sort of things, but... But even with that statement there, you guys are still going with the ten like that was the consensus, yes. They, you'd ask for the consensus of the road crew, and the consensus was they were just talking about it, saying these are the pros and cons. So it was a discussion. So I guess the question I have is for the Public Works Department is can you make do with what you have and be ready to purchase a greater next year? Or do you need the truck and have to wait on greater? Because it just doesn't seem like it's going to be feasible for us to go. What we could do next year without raising taxes. No, you could like hold that. the greater another year, just increase the budget for repair maintenance. Um, but it's going to be worth less. Right. Yeah, true. But I mean, I may, you know, but you're putting about 700 hours a year on it was the average. So, and I, like I said, this number, this 80,000, I was looking online. I mean, I, you know, trying to come up with something similar, you know, similar age, similar and the same model and around the same hours. But, you know, you never know. I mean, I've sold trucks where it was hard to get rid of them. And then I've sold a couple where I made out really well. <laughs> Same truck. Okay, I don't know. No, it's bigger. It's it's bigger? 
Oh, it's bigger than the one. Ted Green? Yep, he's got two sitting over there. Anyway, I would think a new 
you want to have be at least half of the tender, right?
they'll probably uh, take the uh, our existing 550 on a trade in that you might know for. And they did, and they already gave us a price for that. Thank you. 
just where he needs it, and then we can make that decision on there, and I'll readjust the schedule. Can you sharpen the pencil on the, on the low profile? I'm not sure. No, it's and it's pre Thank you. 
gentleman make the commitment for six months? Well, I think the only thing looking at is, you know, like with Dylan at least, he's come in with a game plan and somewhat of a timeline on when he plans on getting his buildings right. online. And that's what I was talking Dylan's about. Dylan's all been, in, you know, mobile properties, which, you know, you know, one is coming to light now, the other one he's just starting, but they have been a year process, not a two year process. And Dylan's been. He's been a good year. I'd say Dylan because he's the only one that we've worked with so far, but he's been working on that building. Yeah, I guess on, on this end of things, it's, you know, we do six months, but it's clearly, it doesn't sound like anything's going to be going on there for quite some time. But. Well, we could tell them that you could tell them that you're not interested in two years and that you want to see, you know, that maybe you'd be open to a year and that might put a spark in them. I don't really know, but I don't know that I just met with him. So I don't think we want a lot of two years. No, no I, and I told him that that was which is enough. You know, a lot I told him that wasn't going to happen. That yeah, there was no way. Like, yeah, it'd be nice if we get some kind of an idea of what is final on this. All I got from him was my conversation was he said it's going to take at least two years, and I explained to him that you currently had done this with Dylan, and it was six months, and he was like, "Well, I'm not going to, you know, six months." I said, "I'm just telling you what the board had offered. I don't see this going on indefinitely." So, um, I would recommend that, that Keith makes an appointment to come in person. Again, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And bring, bring some sort of timeline plan of attack for the property. Yeah. Yeah, so we also have two is not here tonight, so right. it's not good. We should come down and talk to us. Okay, so we'll tell him. Yeah, and he knew what the appointment was. We went over this. So uh, make an appointment, bring a timeline. I think he's on the schedule for August 4th, is that right? I think that's when our next PCA meeting So is he asking for an abatement, or is he um, asking, or is he, or is he uh, challenging his value? I think he's challenging his value of his property. I, 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 I don't think he's, I think this is the only letter that he's filed, so I don't have any real details. Yet. Yeah, because when I spoke to him, he hadn't opened his mail yet, so he, I said, you can't abate. I said, there's a value. I said, so you need to go get your mail and read your tax bill. Yeah. And but see, I said, they're not going to give you a freebie because it's got water, it's got to, sewer, it's got power, it's a building We have to be very careful with, you know, the water and sewer is one thing when you want to work with a contractor to get a, renovate a piece of building from nothing to function. But taxes are completely So you want me to leave him on the vacancy rate? Which is when they when he bought it, I took him off from the sale, the no price, onto a vacancy rate because the property is sold. So you want me to leave him on a vacancy rate? Yeah, I would until he comes up. And then at that point we could talk about renting him back to this vacancy rate or something like that if we want to do that. But okay. And then that gives Lynn Lane an opportunity to weigh in on the floor. Further discussion on that one? Good. Uh, be my word. So before we get to going, um, we had three bids that we had to go over. Um, so some updates. Um, three, we had asked Teresa to kind of give us the update on the project schedule for FEMA. Get that to everybody over there. Yeah, looks like that. So some of the... Some you can write in who gets the so some of the updates, just so people understand what's going on, is the, the first main section, which was the Lilliesville, Campbell, Whittier piece. Uh, the Lilliesville section has been completed. The Whittier section is a day away from being complete. And then uh, Campbell Road, um, the contractor started uh, reshaping the road today. So the hope is that the rain doesn't wash too much out today and that probably by the end of the day, Wednesday, we can open that road up 
full width again. Um, for anybody that hasn't driven up Campbell Road, it's a one lane road basically. So, um, so we temporarily closed the road so that the contractor can get the road and get the the width of the road back so that when they get in to start doing their work, it's safe to have traffic go by. So, um, so that, that was the first contract. So the contract is hoping to have the Campbell Road done by the end of next week. So, so that first FEMA contract, which the complete the contract completion date was the end of August. Seems like things are going ahead of schedule, um, which is good. The southwest quadrant, which is um, some of the intersecting roads in the Louisville area, uh, which was a much smaller contract, um, we will be signing that that one with the contract tomorrow. tomorrow. And I don't have an uh, anticipated start date with that, but my guess is um, it'll probably start here a week or two after. Oh, you don't think he's going to roll right from one? I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't get that feeling today when I talked to him, but uh, that one has a head of August completion date as well, um, but probably wouldn't take much more than a week and a half or two at the most to do it. So. Um, and then we have the East Quadrant, which uh, is the uh, Christian Hill, uh, Sanders Road, that kind of North Main. Did with the contractor Friday, yes. Thursday, Friday, late last week. Friday. And uh, the anticipated start date um, for that work will be next week. Um, and I believe they're looking at starting on the um, Christian Hill sections first. So we'll start to see some action up there. Three weeks worth of work. Probably. Yeah, I think that's what we're talking about. That one has a contract completion date of September 15th, so it looks like that contract has a good opportunity of getting done a month early as well. So that's good. And then we have we have the Northwest Quadrant, which um, which bid today. And just to read it into the records. Good results on that. The northwest quadrant is uh, Gilead Road and some of the associated roads with Gilead. Uh, the road bidder on that one was Debbie B. Rogers at $175,393. And the second bidder was Willie Excavation at $185,000. $218. And third bidder was Avery Excavation at $218,780. And the fourth bidder was Blue Mountain Trucking uh, with a bid amount of $235,898. So the apparent full bidder was W.B. Rogers, $175,393. I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the, the low bid amount uh, from Debbie B. Rogers at $175,393 and also for Therese to sign on behalf of the town. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. meeting we have FEMA is finally going to come to Bethel and Kelly has been working on these <laughs> the paperwork is crazy so they sent us uh, these these uh, spreadsheets and Kelly has been great we, she worked with the ladies so she's been updating those Tuesday at 9 Chris is going to be there um, because we need to talk about the work that we didn't put out to bid and we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to handle that so they will be here then um, so yes, yeah, so the Northwest Quadrant was out. We were um, the other one was Camp Brook Road paving, and um, we 
had one bidder show up to the pre-bid meeting, and, uh, and that was Pike. And their bid was $393,912.50. Um, I spoke to Chris Bump, the title is some Title. ETA. Our our He's great, so I called him and said, hey, I'm a little worried about this number, <laughs> because we had signed an initial grant with them because it's federal highway money, so they kind of estimate your expenses, and so when I saw the number, I was like, but I called Chris, and he asked about the ton price, happy with that, and um, then he asked, um, then he said that because we've had some quantity changes in our other bids, um, that he and Mike Blakesley, he or Mike Blakesley, another tech, AOT tech, are going to come out and double check um, Greg's quantities. I gave him Greg's work today. I scanned it to him, and, and they're going to take a peek at that, maybe come out and look at that. There's also a large culvert on there, about 392, we can't throw somewhere in there, that had lost a bunch of riprap around it that hadn't been addressed yet either, so I did talk to him a little bit about that. So he was fine with the number, um, the ton price he thought was really good, and he's going to verify the quantities. So, um, did you want to wait and award that the next meeting after you talk to? No, I think it, I think it's fine. I think that basically um, what we'll do is we'll just um, you know um, you'll just allow us to uh, award. Obviously, they're the only bidder, and we can't move around. We need to get in their schedule because if we get out of there, are not in our schedule, and there's like, we can't, temporary paving is gonna be a big deal, and we have to stay within 180 days in order to get 100%. So I think that you just make the motion that um, we can accept that, you know, Pike is a low bidder, and just, obviously, if the price goes down, it's all fine. Yeah, that's fine if you make the motion to accept them, and um, I just said that I would be asking the board for the motion to accept Pike, knowing that we may finesse the number a little bit, they verify and they think that Greg's quantities are right on, then we'll say about that. So, um, does um, and I just want to make sure that is on here it says the contract completion date is the 12th of October. Is that the 180 yes. day? Yep, okay. yep, I think so. Actually, I think it might be the 14th, but I you know, okay. but pretty darn close. Yes. So maybe that is the last day, but, um, and I had dealt with, just so in all full disclosure, Chris had nothing to do with this bid, obviously everybody knows he works for Pike, but I was dealing with Caleb, I have no idea what his last one is, I forgot, Con Caleb Connor, not Chris. So, um, and it was an open bid process, everybody had the right, we actually expected other bidders and didn't see them, so, um, but anyways, Chris Bump was okay with the number, thought the ton price was great, better than he expected. Um, but wants to verify the quantity. So I think that you just accept the bid um, as is, and if it's less because um, the quantities are off, then it's less. All right. Or if it's more. It won't be more. I mean, I, well. Or if we're more. Wait, can't. What if we're, yeah. Yeah. What if that quantities are off? Yeah. Yeah. So, we're looking, uh, so, we're so great. Uh, let's, let's, so two things. It's one thing. Oh. Like, as chairman of the board, normally I don't sustain all votes unless there's a tiebreaker vote. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. uh, so I won't be voting on this anyways unless there's a tie. In this case, I wouldn't vote on it because there's a conflict of interest there. But, <laughs> but normally, the chairman of the board doesn't vote for any game unless there's a tie. So, so I think that um, we're, if the price has to change, we can do it. But I, I just, I don't want to not be in their schedule. That, and even Chris Bump said that today. He's like, you've got to get in their schedule. So, so I would entertain a motion uh, for the Camp Brook Road paving to award uh, contingent upon uh, the, the, the district's quantity clarifications mm -hmm. um, to award that to Pike Industries for 393000 
which is installing the temporary bridge, um, the Manila Bridge that got washed out on the Island. Yeah. Um, so that is something that we, we will not be awarding tonight. Okay. We unfortunately received one bid and one bid only, um, which was surprising when if you saw how many people were there that morning. It's Chesterfield is the name of the company out of Maine. no way we are going to even consider 331000 We can't do that. Would so that make, make it functional? Does basically, that be a permanent fix or does that still be a temporary fix? No, I think he's saying make it a permanent fix. No. There was another contractor, local contractor, who suggested that right after the storm but wasn't taken up on it. So what I need to do now is, Chris, I need to talk to Jaron Board, he's the river engineer, and see if Jaron will even bless us putting that bridge back. and say, you su submit to us engineer drawings with a PE stamp of Vermont. So license engineer of Vermont stamps your drawings. And if I get permission from Jaron, then we are they gonna, Are they going to let us up there? Because it sounded like, from when I was out there with the river engineer, it sounded like uh, the span, the span of the bridge was going to have to increase. It's possible. Because to be able to adhere to the flow of water right. by, I don't know, 20 feet or something was going to have to extend. Well, what they're saying now is they're saying that the temporary bridge is going to be 100 feet, but they weren't sure. I haven't heard a number yet on how much it's going to increase. But I said to Chris Bump, I could buy that temporary bridge from you cheaper well, <laughs> than forever than to do this, you know. And I had a couple gentlemen there because they were the other bidders. On the Northwest Quadrant, and they were like, well, if I had, you know, we weren't clear on what the removal of the structure was in the addendum, and I said, you could have called me. Chesterfield called and asked. You could have asked me. You could have asked Hobie Gates at the District Tech. You could have asked any of us, and we would have clarified that. So, um, well, that was the thought I had was, you know, why don't we just put a temporary bridge in there for ever? Uh, well, can you get by that? They were not asking that to be removed at the during the installation. Of, they were asking for the abutment on the, on the house. camper side. The house side the is still there. Is no, it's there. It's there. They're both there. They're both there. It just went around it, and the, because of that, it somehow the um, so decade. It's got, to, it's got to take it out and redo the foot. Well, whether or not they're going to let us play in the river that long, I don't know. But I can talk to Jaron, um, and certainly it's a hardship. We can't put up. Well, I floated. Well, that's an option. That, that is an option, um, and I did reach out to um, Dorothy, who did not respond to that email, because that is an option through FEMA, is you can buy the property as, you know, um, as a process instead of putting, well, even FEMA talked to me about that on the phone, and um, so I told her, I said, you know, I'm not sure if you're interested in selling, but there is, and she didn't respond, so I will have to ask her again is when I break the bad news for that that temporary bridge I said we would happen by the 16th is I don't know it's a chance it's not going to happen um, so and not, you know and not to get but we just can't we can't pay that amount of money I think when she hears the number she's going to realize that we can't spend and not to get off track but we did have a an item next to talk about the temporary bridge rental agreement which yeah. sounds like it's probably not going to happen now no, no. so can we just talk about the Canela Bridge now. I mean, I think, not that we need to make a decision tonight, which we shouldn't, but um, at least
Did you start exploring your options for that bridge? I did speak to FEMA, someone at FEMA, about that because one of my initial concern was if we use FEMA money to repair this bridge, are we going to have, is there some in their language, right. their contract language, when we get the money, is there something that says in the fine print that we have to maintain this for X amount of years? The gentleman I spoke with said um, he didn't believe so, that obviously I should, I could follow up with the BLCT. It was a legal question because when I asked, I also asked Chris Bump that he didn't know. Um, but that was the same gentleman who said, you know, thought about buying the property and then reselling it to somebody else and telling them to put their own bridge in. Uh, because it's a class three, I don't know. So I'm going to have to reach out to BLCT and ask them what our options are. So it's a prior to the, prior to the bid that we got today, I guess the thing that I was thinking about, some of the options, and I don't even know if they're all doable, but one option is to put a temporary bridge in there and just leave it there. My bridge is um, temporary for right. 30 years. Yeah, so put a temporary bridge in there and leave it in there. Um, or there's obviously the put a permanent bridge in there uh, and then maybe maybe there's some sort of way we can put a, put a new bridge in but then sign the rights over to the, the property owner and you know I mean, and it's something we got to think about. We have we have a couple other bridges in similar situations that are servicing one household. So I think if um, if, if we uh, I'm not certain on this, but I think if we uh, made that a class four road, we're still responsible for that bridge, even though it's class four because we put it in. No problem. Yeah. I just didn't know. Well, and that's the question for me too. I'll, and I'm certainly happy to pursue that because I'm curious. Yeah. Is we could. Uh, we can install the bridge and then, I mean, I, I will be very interested to know if we can force them owning this bridge on them. I well, don't know. know. I, but that's what you're right. I think it would be neat to be able to see all our options. Of, Absolutely. Of, of either leaving a temporary bridge there or putting a permanent in or having them take over the ownership of it or obviously now there's another option of maybe repairing what's there. Um, but even if we repair this,
see what we can get. So we'll follow back up on that or that next yep. week. Yep. Is it August 8th? No, can't be. Second? Oh, is a Friday. Right, I was going to say, I think I'm off. Well, not far out, huh? Oh, yeah. August 12th. Okay. I'll make a knowledge update. And then we have the catch all last one, the pea vine, Boulevard, and mm -hmm. some of the stuff that goes to the water sewer system. Yep, and that has not even been issued yet um, because we're waiting. We have, um, I said that's the one I picked to um, two rivers yep. to, put, to put out. So that's two spots on um, pea vine, which is actually done. They're done in the sense that. Um, know what we need to do for the culvert. We had, um, they approved one of the designs for the washout on the bank. Um, Tim did a great job, of course, and I was taking photographs of the damage that up to one of the reservoirs. Um, so he submitted that along with some quantities of material that was taken out at the Bethel Mills pump station for wastewater. Sent all that stuff to REVAC. So um, that, so she should be putting the finishing touches on that one. Um, then after that, of course, and I'm going to tell her now, an RFP for engineering of the permanent bridge, but so I'm going to tell her tomorrow to, don't worry so about it. So when do you think that will go up to bed then? I don't know. I'll have to update, ask her tomorrow. Within the next couple weeks? Probably. I would assume, yeah. I'll ask her for an update on Canelo and put a hold on the uh, engineering yeah. RFP. But I know we just barely last week got answers from Jaren Ward, so that was kind of So the, um, and, and also the follow up on the FEMA project schedules is, uh, so I've been working with Alan, so obviously there are sections that are covered under FEMA on these roads that are damaged, but there are sections on these roads that are not covered by FEMA. And in order to not waste the FEMA money, we have to be able to do some maintenance of our own to the town uh, to tie in some of these projects. So uh, Alan and I have been in you know, now that Hilling Bill and Whittier are pretty much done, that the Alan and his team are going to go up to Whittier and, and Louisville and tackle a couple of the issues that are on that road that's not FEMA related. So, you know, we will still have some ongoing projects going on these roads, and, and the, the goal is to have uh, our public works force out there uh, probably right behind the FEMA jobs starting tomorrow doing some of the work that needs to be done in conjunction with it. So, um, so we will, um, I'm sure we'll be fielding a lot of phone calls at the town level, especially now that they're seeing a contractor doing work, and then once that contractor leaves, they're like, uh-oh, we'll see, oh, that needs to be fixed. So we're probably going to get enough tick and phone calls. Let's just make sure we're responsive and we can lay out, you know, Alan and I, you know, went with that stuff today, so we've got a game plan over the next few days to get that stuff done. I would just, you know, right now just have Therese be the funnel for all the yeah. calls that come through. And, um, and too, at this point, I'm assuming that's what you're going to do after each section is just meet with Alan or somebody on the road crew to get into this is what's what. Right. And any other roads, obviously, that are not, Alan knows the sections that are his to maintain anyway, so or to get up to speed. So. And the goal is to continue to do that with these other projects, too, as we
just a more quick question. I noticed that the, uh, one of the band shells has been operating on Wednesdays. He's going to follow there with the row and whatnot. And yep. Is that, it says here that that has to go through the event official. And do we know that um, that's the see. case? So number three, uh, open flames are being prohibited. Open rows are prohibited during public events unless provided for by event officials. Open flames are prohibited inside of open house. What happened was, um, the situation is, is that Stacy Barkham came to um, Greg to talk to him about, see if there was any zoning regulations about being able to do this. Um, and uh, this, he, he must, he has a trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, cool That's what I thought. Yeah. And um, there's no zoning regulation, of course, that covers that. And you don't have an itinerant vendor uh, ordinance either. So there was nothing to prevent him from doing that. We did put him in touch with a couple people, including Mr. Duddy, John Duddy, to, who does the band show concerts. And um, so he, he certainly, so they're working out a situation right now about possibility of them. They had fed the band before and after and the possibility of them contributing a percentage of they make or becoming a sponsor or something. Since you don't have an itinerant vendor ordinance, it's hard to, you can't make them do anything, you know, but we had a good conversation about it, and he certainly is willing to contribute as he starts making, you know, profit, but currently he had not estimated it correctly and had given a bunch of food away, so it really didn't end up making much of anything. But the liability is something should happen there. He needs to carry his insurance, you know, he has insurance that would carry that, and um, I didn't really, you know, I never thought about the fact that he had is that now where is this open flame and crude grill? Is it just part of his food car or is he setting up a grill well, he's, he's like at the, out toward the sidewalk and uh -huh. the band shop where it's a little more open. But it's, but it's in his Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's in his car. So it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the street. No. Right. No, no, no. So. Um, yeah, just a liability issue, but I know. Right. I just say as long as we have maybe a copy of his insurance and when we're on file, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't see that at this point there's really not enough. Yeah, so, but I can ask him to ask for, for a copy, copy of his insurance. insurance. Yeah. Um, and, um, Stacy, and if he doesn't have proper insurance, then he could say that in order, you know, you could say, sorry, you can't do it because it's an open flame and it's, um, right. and it, the event sure. official, I assume that the event official would be the select board. Um, well, these are put on by the... Council of the Arts. Right, but they don't, they don't carry insurance. They don't or carry it either. I think it yeah. would have to be the select board. But um, so I can reach out to them and ask them for a copy of this insurance. But since it's inside, it's, I think they were probably more concerned about somebody being able to knock something over and you know, be injured in that way. So that would be my guess. Did we, uh, did we make a motion last time to adopt this based on the amendments? No. You said that we just bring it back. I would entertain a motion to accept the facility use policy as written. We move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Getting tired. Where's one? Huh? <laughs> That's right. How long is the second one? I just hand wrote in the correct date on the bottom, so.
So we just wanted to update the language on here just to say no overnight parking or camping. What's the add to that?
don't have one, a police chief, we put town manager's office on here, like to say who, when it was received, when it was received by, and you guys, you know, to approve them. Because Dave had a concern about, because people weren't following, they were doing a point drop, but weren't following any rules. Is that correct, sir? So, and this lays that out, and this tells, you know, so, yes, you do have several months, but we coordinate them. Kelly puts them on the calendar and says whether or not, you know, when they, she signs them up and says you could do it this weekend or that weekend, but to me, um, I mean, we've never, I don't think we've ever turned a point drop down. No, but what happens is you right. become liable. If you have somebody in the street, if, if, if they were in the street and I can pretty much guarantee that they did not were adhering to any standards and they had minors, then even, you know, the fire department, when they do a coin drop, um, but we they can't, can't even know, have. We can't be on pins and needles worrying about lawsuits all the time. No, you, you can't, get, but, you, but, but you, you, we can get sued for anything downtown. Well, I mean, of course. Well, yes, but you also, you know. You could. I mean, you can. For example, it's chasing well, everywhere. If they don't give you returns. Yeah. Right. Then they don't have a coin drop. Yeah. And they need to adhere to MUTCD standards. You need to have signage coming up on it for safety of them because if somebody, I don't care who it is, and they and you have waived your authority to approve these, and whoever you waived your authority to isn't making sure that they're following all uniform traffic. Going to drop on a road that's got a speed limit of over 35 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely rules about this, and they're there for a reason. We so. restricted it just up here by the White Church anyways. Yeah. Right. And that's been our design. And I just can't imagine that this is an onerous process. I mean, it's going to take two the, minutes to... I thought when we accepted the coin drop that they, that we assumed liability under the town's umbrella for that, no? Only if it's like the fire department is carried under your insurance. But if the Knights of Columbus wants to do one, then they're going to have to prove they had insurance. So the only ones who did them... Um, we had the fire department did them and uh, the ambulance yeah, did like them like here, sports. but you have, you're going to have um, yeah, Special Olympics. They have insurance. Yeah. So they need to prove that they have Historical proof of society, insurance and they need to adhere. The Humane Society usually does Then they all have insurance. Yeah. Historical, so so the Historical wanna... Society would come under the towns. Right. Insurance? I would have to go um, out of the town. I don't know. I don't know. Are, are they nonprofit? I've, my guess is you're, they're a 501c3 because I haven't seen, like, you, I'm hoping you have somebody sharing your contents because I don't think it's us. I'll have to ask. Mm -hmm. look, well, we'll look when we do the renewal, but. Mm -hmm. So it's not an so only process. So how do we process. want to do this going forward? Do we want to bring it back to the board level? Yes. Or do we want to appoint the town manager to take care of these as we have? I'm not sure you can do that. I don't think that you can. Well, I didn't see anything that said that Pawn off your authority. <laughs> Listen to him. I don't know. Well, I'll read to it. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. We couldn't do that. We couldn't assign. I mean, if we give you the power, that's no different than right. you being a selectman at that point. Right. So. We always talk about legislative body, not. I mean, I guess it doesn't really bother me if we had to go through one every time. If a person named in an order made by the agency under the authority of this section neglects or refuses to comply with order, oh, never mind. Maybe, yeah. I was looking to see if it, um... Well, apparently Kelly's doing all the work, so... All, all she's all doing... We need, all we need to know is, is that time available? Well, and she will have Maybe told them that. Before it even comes to you, you will know if it's if it's here, then she we will have managed that on our end. Um, and it also says that not-for-profit municipal agencies may solicit contributions. Um, provided that approval is granted by the local legislative body, and the mm -hmm. legislative body ensures that there is, in effect, a policy of liability insurance. So, yeah, I'm not sure you can pass it off to the town manager. But, anyways, it's going to take two minutes. When it comes to you, you're all going to know. You'll be able to put on ORCA in the paper, whatever, that the fire department is having a coin drop on... Well, we don't know yet. We have group. Possibly on August 31st. And uh, on August 31st. But when they come to you, you it will already have been 
been put right. on the calendar. Right. So. No, that's fine. I mean, we did it. And, and the applicants will be aware of all the requirements. Yeah, for because they have to, they uh, have to fill this out, and yeah. they have to fill it out, and they have to sign it, and they have to agree to comply with any and all participant and traffic sign requirements attached to the permit. So I will put a sample on there. So who and, will be in charge of making sure that those requirements are? Enforcement being enforced. Being enforced. Well, we what we could do is have the um, if the constable's on duty that day, or um, you know myself or whoever, we can make so sure. We all drive through them probably. Three yeah, four exactly. Times. We'll I make do sure. Anyway. Yeah, at least twice. We will make sure that they're enforced yeah. because if something happens, yeah. they're coming here. And yes, you may have. Um, special authority as being a town, like so somebody trips and they can't sue you, but in this case, they can and they will. All right, so moving on, we have the Bethel Fire Department has asked for a drop. <laughs> there you go. And they are looking for August 31st from 9 to 1. Yep. And they obviously have the correct insurance, and I know they have signage, but I will certainly go over that with the fire chief. So I entertain a motion to accept the application to conduct a <coughs> coin drop for the Bethel Volunteer Fire Department for August 31st. So Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You've got to sign it. What's that? You've got to sign it. It's just the chair. Oh, uh, Mo, I'm sorry. Uh, was it uh, Mo and Paul? Yes. Oh, I forgot I was taking the minutes, too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoops. Oops. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oops, get ahead of me. Is it just the chair that signed it? Yes, but yeah, yeah, just the chair. And that's a sample form that was used, and I can't remember what town I found that in. I gave it to Kelly to... Great. Thank you. We'll have Dave and Borsa. That's right, yeah. August 31st. <laughs> Sorry, they make you. We're going to give them a. No, I agree. I have. first one. No, I agree. I agree with you. All right. Deputy Coin Drop. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. Now you know what's up. My first call is Fifteen dollars <laughs> buys this pizza. Not this guy. Well, you have to get small on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We have the right rule complaint. I think, um, I think everybody had gotten the letter last time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and then you got yeah. another letter because mm -hmm. he, I had spoken with Mr. Wright, and then he sent you, which should also be in here, another letter after he and I spoke. Um, and Kelly, so I asked Kelly to give you everything, the pictures, the past correspondence. Yes, you can see right here, you've got a copy of this where it says Teresa, because I spoke to him, yep. and he wrote me a letter after. So I wanted you to have the entire history <coughs> of this. And um, I did, well, you know, I spoke with Brian, and, and he did, um, and, I, and I told the same thing to Alan, that he was very complimentary of Doug Marshall, said that, you know, Doug came in and fixed some of it, you know, what he could, but by Colt Brian, he said, you don't landscape with a grader. So, but he certainly was appreciative of the work that Doug had done and, um, you know, wanted to that, yes, some, some of the work was, um, initially was done by, done by um, Doug with the grader. So, <laughs> so, that is a large pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I had um, <laughs> spoken with him and talked to him about, you know, the possibility of, you know, that you were obviously concerned that you didn't want to set a precedent, and um, I explained all of this to him, and he addressed that in his letter. So I did ask him that if I called him tomorrow with bad news, how was he going to take it? And he said, that, well, he would appreciate my phone call, and it might be a unfortunate letter to the editor and um, I was like okay but he was very kind to me on the phone we spoke was appreciative that I called
Danny did say you were there, that you'd seen him doing some of the work. And I had said that, yes, you had said so at the meeting. I mean, I, I, my opinion on this hasn't changed. Um, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that his property was damaged due to, you know, the plowing slash grading that had gone on on that road. Um, and, you know, I think shame on us. We should have been more pro proactive in reaching out and dealing with the taxpayer at hand and trying to correct any, any, any damage or fix any damage to the property. Um, so I, I definitely feel for it. I, I would be mad if I was the property owner as well. Um, but again, I, I'm one not wanting to set precedents on issues. So I know it's not a lot of money, but um, you know I, I'm not personally open to reimbursing based on that. So the last one was a hard winter, anyways, because the ground wasn't froze. And just going over the bump, you're going to win the sod over somewhere. There, and it's probably half a million percent of the roads. What he used to what I saw his day. I mean, we might get a little bad press out of it, um, but if we start, if we start paying these, then we'll, it'll be a never-ending. Well, I, th uh, well, I think we need to address the, the situation, though. Um, that's, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with it, to be honest with you. Um, I'd almost write him a check myself, but I think he's looking more for a resolution of the miscommunications that he that he thinks happened or that did happen uh, during the whole process and I did apologize and to him you know on I, behalf of myself and the town said this shouldn't have happened and I did apologize to him and maybe we need to have a, an apology letter from the select board perhaps maybe that might, might be appropriate but uh, I understand what you're saying about setting a precedent but Paying for the repairs, but I think that he just—he's feeling like he didn't hasn't had the communication that mm -hmm. that uh, he should have had the response from the town. I'm happy to send him a letter of apology on behalf of the board if you'd like. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm sitting on a fence here because I got a call from this club here right in my driveway because the town didn't clean the bed just in the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. Fix that, it's gonna cost me hundreds of dollars. Do I take a fix that and send you a bill? Because you need your culvert unplugged? Yeah, it's plug solid. I dug it out, I dug the dishes out this year, but too late. No, you're right. I mean, you're right. I'm only one of I, 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 This is, you couldn't, he was right. You couldn't get this done by anybody for that much. No, true. That, that, but I could just see it so long. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we'll have 100 people sending in that bill for $100. Yeah. I mean, I fix, you know, I fix damage to my property sure. every spring due to plowing. And, you know, I put seed down and break and it takes me an hour or so to do it. And well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's yeah. the money. I don't think the $116 right. is, got, is, the, is the point. No, I mean, we, we need to do better as, you know, we should be identifying these people when, when they call. We should mm -hmm. hear them out and, and make a visit to see them and, and do what we can within reason to address the issue. Now, yep. I mean, are we going to go out, you know, would we have gone out there and probably done the extent of what he did? I doubt it. No, probably not. You know, but a lot of times, you know, people just want to be heard. They, you know, want you to come out. Um, and at the end of the day, probably, you're right, probably the gentleman here would have just said, hey, do you think next year we can avoid this, you know? But being that he was, mm -hmm not heard and, you know, got ugly and, um, you know, I don't blame, I, mean, I don't blame at all. Asking um, for a recommendation of how to avoid it. Does he have another complaint? That's a good idea. How could that not happen next year? How could, yeah, not happen to him or someone else? Or? 
Right, how could this not happen next year? Okay. I'm happy to speak to him again. That's fine. Did you want me to? I, I'll speak to him, obviously. I will call him tomorrow, as I said I would. And, um, talk to him about it. Did you also want me to send him a letter? I mean, is this a, uh, Alan, are you familiar with the right on this road? Yeah. Is, that, is this, is this an issue that's going to be an ongoing issue or is this a one-time? I think it's a one-time thing. What it looks like is part of the photos and actually looking out and looking after you. It's a spot where it looks like the pool was plowing at that time. We moved over the plow and the wing for a car path. It's pretty narrow. And then we take them on without facing the like I said, the last one there, I mean, it was, he really did the whole saw. Well, yeah, there was some of those days that it was mm -hmm. thawed out. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So what do we, I guess, what do we, we've had a few of these this year. You know, granted, we probably had more complaints this year just because the winter was really nasty. And, um, but on, on this case, I mean, um, you know, so we've had a couple of these, and people have claimed that they called the town office and the garage. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, granted, Greg's not here to defend himself, so I right, don't know. No, I don't but know. I mean, I will say that typically, what is your um, Alan at the, the public works building, anyways? What is you know, if you get if someone leaves a message on your machine. What is typically your response to that message? Is it, do you check those messages daily? Do you He calls people back, and we have gotten several yeah, compliments yeah, from yeah, him about that. The office is, it's messed up a message where I can't make out a number. I don't catch the name. I'll get the number from Delhi or whoever's the house in town or Therese or Delhi or an address, and then I'll go. If there's no number, to call them. I'll actually bring the address. Okay. Off yeah. The Absolutely. I mean, I do think that was that and we've received several compliments about Alan calling people back. And I think one of the things that happened last year was that it released happened. So several phone calls that I personally fielded were feelings from residents of people pushing back banks or the or like their lawn or whatever with the wing of the plow. And obviously the wing isn't used for expanding the size of the road. It's, it's greater. But so there were some complaints about that. And, um, and I believe that um, certainly if that name was given to Alan, um, Alan called them back. But I do know that was, um, that was a, a complaint we received. But yeah, we, like I said, Alan always calls people back. So. And obviously, if we can't, we try to do the best customer service we can in the office by answering or taking a message or whatever. And if it's something you know we can't answer, then we'll say you know we'll just give the town garage a call. But if we can answer it, and or we just take their name and number and then give it to Alan to call them back because you know we're not out there, we don't know. Or vice versa. Yeah. I can't answer. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that. Well, I think in this case, I think if we did a, a, an apology letter to them, you know, just to let them know that as a select board, we, we understand the, the plight and we, unfortunately, it went through the path that it took. Um, but on the other hand, we can't set a precedent by sure. covering the charge. I will do it. And I think that's a good call to ask how we could do it, you know, better. So I think that's a good idea. You know, we really learned from it that our communication needed to be needs to be improved.
um, from the background on that, it sounds like that there was some monies that were available through the water department, water, no, sewer, sewer, yeah. through the sewer, sewer department years ago to purchase that. That was, that was a process that purchased through the uh, federal money for the sewer project so that the sewage could be spread with it. Yeah. And, that, and that was ongoing for 30 years. So you know, and, and we couldn't use it for anything else other than sewage disposal for 30 years. And that was 36 years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's so we have the tractor that's doing nothing. We had talked mm -hmm. briefly about, you know, um, could we upfit it to do an activity that, mm -hmm. that would benefit the town, which it doesn't sound like it can. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked to um, Um, we talked to Tim about yeah, what he, it was going to, you know, as I said, he didn't have it. He didn't want to use it for anything. So I think at this point we were talking about getting the approval from the board to go ahead and um, go out and seek yeah. uh, a sale of it. Um, mm -hmm. I guess there were a couple of people that had asked mm -hmm. about that tractor before, mm -hmm. and maybe we could recruit some of those monies and use towards maintenance of some of the vehicles. Not money yeah. should go back into yeah. the sewer system. The money has to go back. I, I agree with that. I agree with Mo on that. It was a, it was a sewer funded project, and Lord knows that the, it, you know everybody needs the money, right? Mm -hmm. Sewer, water, trucks, anything. But I do think that the money, the sale of the tractor, the money should go into the sewer fund, um, into He's his capital got fund. Five thousand dollar pieces to be rebuilt. Exactly. Exactly. And and. Um, so I, I do, I agree. I think that it should just go that. And that's why it author us to in the motion for him to authorize him to uh, put it up for sale and to sign the bill of sale. That way he can just take care of it and he'll sell it. But yes. So the money goes back into the solution. Yes, the money, yes. And you could, you could make that as part of your motion if you wanted to, Mo. <laughs> but I agree. I think you're right. Uh, you're, you're totally right. Oh, we better put that in the minute. Smo is totally right. <laughs> that tractor should be worth somewhere between three and twelve thousand dollars. And who wants it? Well, I, Tim actually had looked it up and was surprised at what he had. And of course, too, it's been maintained. Just so it's never had any real work. Yeah, just, but it's never really worked like a farm tractor. Right, exactly. So it doesn't have a lot of hard hours on it, and he's maintained it. And so, yeah, he probably has the original, I guarantee he has the original paperwork that came with it. So I'm sure it's worth um, So I would entertain a motion um, to authorize Tim Mills to advertise and, uh, and sign any potential bill of sale. As long as the the money is recouped from the sale, go back to the sewer department. Would we want to kind of run it through Therese too before uh, it's signed the final bill of sale? Um, is there, no, I think let need? Tim do it. I mean, it's no. just he'll tell me when he sells it. But if he he can sign the bill of sale, I think that's fine. If you make authorize him in the motion, that's fine. It's one less thing I got to do. With. And it sounded like talking with him that he was gonna seek out. Yeah. And if oh, he, he has no choice. Yeah, he has to put it out. He can't yeah. just. He knows a couple people interested. He has to, um, and he knows that too yeah. because it is town property. Hence, why the select board is the only one who and can. He seemed pretty confident that he could get a decent value. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confused. Uh -oh. <laughs> the, well, remember the last, last time she only gave you every other page, you got the whole deal, but the people okay. who scanned it. But <laughs> it says from June 24th and July 8th. So I have July 8th and I have June 10th. So do we not have June 24th? Oh, for kids' sakes. I didn't look through the packet, so I thought it wasn't it July 24th that you only got every other page of. No, I know. Well, I'm just yeah, asking. Um, yes, some of some of the yeah. So the, maybe she put. All right, so it has to be. So she put the wrong minutes. June. Or are these June 10th minutes? I don't know why you got the 10th. Um, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. But you're right, June 10th. So, <laughs> wait till I tell her. All right. So I guess you're just going to be able to approve the July 8th ones. Papers and I, expensive. Please. It is. I'm going to talk. 
things. Yeah. So that paper in the book's getting expensive. Well, that's why we're not doing it. <laughs> well, this is why it's a perfect example. <laughs> 75 pages times three or four that were done on this. So. Oh, but that was the bids. Oh. Those were the bids. Okay. So, um, not in packet again. Okay, I will let her know. 24. Okay, how about the 8 then? Well, are these the eights? Uh, oh, yeah, the eights. This is the eight. Yeah, that's the eights right there. Okay, that's cool. I didn't see anything. Good night. Good night. You no, take care. No, no, it's fine. Okay, so I entertain a motion thick. to accept the meeting minutes of the July 8th meeting. So move. Yep, second. Okay, all in favor? Uh -huh. So the eighth is good to sign, the 24th, well, hold on. <laughs> so you'll put the eighth in the packet the next time. Are you talking about her? No, the 24th, uh, the eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, in the book. Yes, sir. Perfect. Well, because what happened it was getting confusing because nobody knew what the ones in the book were the amended ones or the not amended. I finally said, look, why don't you just let them adopt the minutes, make any changes, and then have them sign the book. And uh, you don't even have to sign the book. You know. All you have to do is once you accept them at the board meeting, you don't even have to take the other step. But since you've done it for so long, you can... Out of the way for 612 years. I know. Well, that's why we're going to let you keep doing it. I'm just saying you don't have to. But you She's can. already trying to change things. <laughs> I'm just trying to streamline the process. That's all. But you can sign we away. the constable's reports. I think the one thing that I'm kind of enjoying with Reed and Oscar's reports is it seems like... Um, you know, he's cracking down on stuff. You know, it seems like his visits come away with a verdict. Yeah. Uh, and you, you hear about it, it's over. Yeah. We're done. Mm -hmm. It's not so, done. Okay. So the, the ticket report that we saw, is that a quarterly thing we're going to see or a monthly or? I don't know. I'll have to ask. I'm not sure what. Last meeting we had a kind of a. Right. He, was, he wasn't around at all last week. No, he had surgery, yeah, so he's he actually out. out for like three weeks I'm or more. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Should out. Should we speed for a while now? Yeah. <laughs> as long as the state is not set up. You're on tape here, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it seemed like he's been on top of things. Uh, other yeah. than, yeah, just, it's nice to kind of be able to catch up with what's going on ticket yeah. wise. But yeah. Instances wise, I've talked to a few of the business owners in town that have been pleased with. Some of his uh, cleanup work, um, you know, getting some of the riffraff off the streets that shouldn't be there. Um, I've heard good feedback. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah. been, he's been uh, I wouldn't say that we don't have any issues at Finley Bridge, but it seems like that hot spot's kind of died down a little bit because he's been spending a little bit of time out there. Um, and he actually got one in his report there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually got two up there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dirt bike and, the dirt bike and the unregistered, uninspected vehicle. Seems pretty good. Uh, the other thing caught with some of the business owners downtown is they, they like how responsive he is too. Mm -hmm. They've had some issues with some people in town. They make a call and he, boom, he's right on it. So, oh. uh, Speaking of that, I just from downtown, so the, you were going to talk to me about the bulb outs. Yeah. I forgot about that, but they're not in the right spot. I forgot. I don't have to ask. We can do it under other conditions. Uh huh. All right, and then we had some other um, meeting minutes in the air. So, all waste board, mow, anything hot coming out of there? These minutes are back from June, so they're quite old. How are they coming with the, the position that's open? Oh, you mean for the, uh, on the floor? He's only put an ad out a few places, and, and we recommended that he yes. get it out yeah. more and visible. And uh, he's getting ads together for a uh, manager, you know, to do some. Okay. Okay. But that hasn't gone out yet, the manager ad? No, no, no. Just the uh, bookkeeper or whatever? No, all no, we got out, like, basically, other, other than the person on the floor, is uh, just for the manager right now, then we'll... That out after we get a manager. I will say there's a, I don't know who it is, but there's a newer person that's working there now. Maybe they've hired because There's someone that's been working there for maybe a month now. Mm -hmm. We 
haven't had a meeting. Yeah, since, he so. seems to keep the facility a lot cleaner. Yeah. 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 The last yeah. couple times I've been so down there. Been boy, he started working there a month or so. Yeah. Oh, he's been Ryan, been a he's been working there he's been for quite a while. ages. Yeah, he's been there for yeah. Quite a while. yeah. yeah. Right. So yes, time. but he he started as a part-time position where he was making sure that if you paid cash, he checked he your it. slip and made oh, sure that's yeah. all you were throwing out. And then when Roger Vesper retired, someone else has been in there running the excavator and stuff, and whoever that is has been keeping that that's place. Brian. That's really Brian. Brian. That's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because usually you go in there on Saturday at 11 o'clock and it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff piled up there. <laughs> you go in there at 11 o'clock and it's clean. You know, everything's taken care of. So, yeah. like, doing a good job. That's so long. And there was rec committee minutes. There was, there was, oh, there was the town of Bethel annual meeting. Though she hadn't, she hadn't done her. Um, I was a little confused for that one. Green through it. Ma'am, I forgot to put a minute. But can we talk about the recreation minutes for a second? Because yep. I have a question. Um, Ellie reached out to me as it says in here. Uh, they're talking about um, the old swing set will have to be removed um, in August. They talk about an F under other business because so that people can, Premier can start work on the skateboard park and then um, Deach report that Morgan had suggested that they dig out the culvert and, and so I drove over there Friday after I had looked at some issues on Camp Brook Road and looked at the pool and spent five minutes with Deitri so she could tell me where in the plan where were things supposed to be. And so she pointed out for me where the skate park was going to go. So what Ellie had sent me an email saying that she wanted to meet with me on the 29th, I think, at 10 a.m. And she wants to talk about um, any engineering work that needs to be done before the skate park goes in. Well, so there's a couple of things. <laughs> so one is, yeah, you know, it's, it's not level. There's a lot of water that comes off the bank that just needs to be redone. So there would be an engineering that would have to occur, which I would, in my mind, assume would come out of the amount of money that you set aside for the skate park. Because yeah. if you mm -hmm. were going to put something else there, it, you know, it seems like it needs to come out of that money. Mm -hmm. um, so we did look at the area. talked about that mm -hmm. several yeah. occasions about the drainage because that that piece of land there has, got, has always had a very high water table mm -hmm. and we've talked about the water that comes off that hill and that's been been part of that design for a while mm -hmm. yeah. granted there has been you know new people to that process as it's been going but yeah the other thing to not everything was i was a little bit concerned about also in this is it says premier work will need to start We haven't proved it yet. Last I knew, they were getting prices from. Um, uh, what was that? Because when Shane stood here, Parker. Parker. Yeah, Parker. Okay, so maybe Premier was. I, I see Premier. I was like, mm. so they still got to go out to the bid. Yes, Parker. Yeah. They can't. I mean, that's not true. you could sole source it because it is in your purview. It is in your purview to do so. Mm. However. I don't know if, how you would do that. I mean, you know. You could sole source it. It totally gives you the right to do that within mm -hmm. your policy. But we hadn't settled on the voters to do that. No, but we no, haven't, no, we haven't settled on the final design yet either. And, and, right? Right? They're yeah, supposed to come back to us anyway. Yeah. She doesn't yeah. spend any federal money that requires that this anybody here to take a pay in or that they go out and bid. So I just wanted to look around her because the other thing she was doing was uh, talking. She's meeting that same day. So I did tell us that there had to be because once she's 
that fifty thousand is going to be oh. gone before you even oh, you before you even. additional monies though that one year that yeah Corey, so when Corey did his presentation so we, we started off the fund with like like twenty thousand dollars we were appropriating a year right but you never said when I, I read the language of the fund specifically because we had to take some money out of this to replace the pool pump and it didn't say it was specifically for a skate car or anything so I'm wondering if since so much time has lapsed that perhaps you might want to instruct the recreation committee to put out a survey
was it, it, and it was there was a town meeting in which uh, which Corey Stearns was at that point you know a pretty vocal player in the recreation department and he had he had gone in front of the voters to ask for additional funds you know we went from like 20 to 40 that year or something yeah. Yeah. just an additional yeah. amount to be addressed in, just for the skate park which was approved by the voters at the town meeting. Now, I do agree that things have changed in town and they've taken a long time to put this thing together. I, I hear a lot more. Well, they had. They raised it. They had a dinner. They had, well, the Tony Hawk grant was supposed to be 25000 By the time you do your engineering studies for the for all that part, you, you've shot the rest of the summer. Exactly. And, um, I mean, if it was up to me, I would. I'd go get some framing and make sure you had ice skating this winter or something. Like, well, you got to do something. Yeah, and I will tell you. Yeah, and that, I'm sure you get somebody to donate the lumber. Well, the plastic. Well, there was somebody that yeah, wanted to. Fire station will put the water in and you can skate. You know. D3 but, was yeah. approached by someone who said, hey, yeah. if you put a basketball court in, I will come.
Frisbee golf. Yeah. Yeah. Something, yeah. It's very popular. Yeah. 
and when they first got installed. <laughs> Okay. All in favor? Fine.